This is a lesson from our Moho Animation course. To get the full course, go to bloopanimation.com slash mohoanimation. In this video, we're going to look at a super powerful and versatile technique called Smart Bone. This is probably the biggest selling point of Moho. A Smart Bone lets you use the rotation of a bone to drive any other bit of animation you want. You'll see how powerful this is in a second. Let's look at a prime example of where you should use Smart Bones. This is a super simple example of an arm. In this case, the arm itself is one layer. And you've seen in previous videos how we add the bones and bind the artwork to the right bone. But there's always the issue of how the artwork gets bent and pinched at the joints. You can try adding points and adjust the bone strength. Or in this case, we could make a smooth joint for bone pair, which helps. But to take full control of how the arm bends, let's make this forearm a smart bone and use it to animate how the points around the joint should move. We do this by adding actions to it. So let's go to Window, Actions, and this is the Actions palette. Now make sure you have the bone selected, and then click this button to add an action. If you did it right, the action should be named the same as the bone you selected, and your timeline will change color. That means this is the timeline just for this action, as opposed to the main timeline where all the rest of your animation goes. The timeline for the action is where we'll define what animation happens as the bone rotates. First, we need to set an end keyframe position for the bone itself to define the range of motion that will drive the animation. We'll use the transform bone tool and start it just in its neutral straight state and then come out a good amount of frames and rotate the bone basically as far as it could naturally go. The more frames you give yourself, the more subtle change you can include in the animation, but you might end up needing to do more work making sure every frame looks right. 48 frames will be fine for this case. Obviously that looks terrible now, but that's exactly what we're gonna fix. Now that that's set, let's switch to the arm layer Notice I have the channel visibility on for the bone layer so we can match up the timing. Now we're going to animate the vector points of this shape. So we need to select them and use the transform points tool to click and set a keyframe for the straight state. Then we can go through the animation of the bend and make corrections when it distorts in a way we don't want. Now you can just fix the area around the joint if you want, or you can basically do whatever else. Like let's make the bicep flex as the arm comes up. Next, let's fix the spot where the shape overlaps itself. The goal is to make it look like the forearm is squishing against the upper arm in a way that looks natural. It's important to note that you can't delete or add any new points, just move the existing ones. Otherwise it will mess up its ability to transition. It may take many different keyframes over the course of the animation to make sure it looks right the whole time. And there we go. That bend looks fairly natural. Now let's go back to the main timeline using the actions palette. And now that that's done, whenever that elbow joint bends relative to the upper arm, the shape of the arm is going to flex like we defined in the action. So now we don't have to worry about that action anymore. This arm will just work. So anywhere a bend in a joint doesn't look right, you have the option to fix it by hand with a smart bone action. Now here's another common example of how to use smart bones. A smart bone can be used to animate anything in the bone group, not just a layer it's bound to. In fact, your smart bone doesn't have to be bound to any layers. It can just be a free-floating dial. This is a common way to control facial animation in a moho rig. For this example, we're going to create a smart bone dial that controls all the layers of this face and lets us rotate the whole head. First notice how this file is set up. All the pieces are separate layers, and some of the layers, like the eyes, mouth, and cheek lines here, are in a mass group, so when we move those around, they can never go outside the head. So to get our bone dial, we first need a bone group to draw it on, 
So let's just right click and convert the head group to a bone layer. Now we can draw a bone that will affect the contents of this group called head turn. And let's set its angle constraints to 90 degrees either way. Oh, and this is important. Turn the bone strength all the way down so it doesn't directly affect any of the artwork when you move it. Now we're going to make it so this dial can be rotated either left or right to turn the head left or right. Now, when you make a bone that works in two directions like this, it's best to have the middle be the neutral starting state and actually have two different actions for each direction. So let's start with the left direction. On the actions palette, we'll make an action. Then we need to come out later on the timeline and set the left position on the bone. In this case, I made it 90 frames. That way there's a frame that corresponds to each degree of rotation. Now we need to make the animation of the head turning over the course of these 90 frames. I'm gonna start with the head masking group and move that whole thing over. That will serve as the guide for where everything else needs to get repositioned. Then let's start with the features on his right. The ear would actually be moving backwards if the head were turning, so that's easy. This hair is a little harder because at some point in the animation, we need it to switch from in front of the head to behind it. To make that possible, we need to go to the group the head parts are in, and in the layer settings on the depth sort tab, enable animate layer order. Then at the point we need the hair to move back, we just reorder the layers in the layers palette. That layer switch will be represented with a channel on the timeline of the bone group, not the layer itself. So now I'm going to go through and shift the rest of the features of the face over to make the side position for the head. Once that's done, let's go back to the main timeline and check it. Cool, so that half of the dial is done. Also, you may want to enable show label on the bone so you can see its name to remember what it does. Now we just need to make another action and repeat the process for the other direction. So there we go, we've got our dial to turn the head left and right. Now let's get even cooler and make a dial for turning the head up and down. First, I'll make sure I don't have any bones selected, then draw another bone. You wanna make sure your bone dials aren't parented to each other. This time I'll show you a shortcut. With the bone selected, we can come up to Bone, Make Smart Bone Dial. With this, we can automatically set our name angle parameters, and the number of frames it should take the bone to rotate on the timeline inside of our actions. This time I'm not gonna make it 90 degrees either direction because the head would have a more limited range of motion going up and down. Really, you can use whatever values you want, but this makes the dials more intuitive to me. And then we do want two separate actions for positive and negative angles. And click OK. Now that sets up the bone and creates the smart actions in the actions panel for us. And if we go inside, we can see the keyframe for the rotation of the bone is already set up and we just need to animate everything else. So I'll make the looking downward animation. And then I'll move over to the other action and rotate the head looking up.
Now back on the main timeline, we can use both dials and it's smart enough to combine the two actions and to allow us to point the face in any direction we want. So now to animate the character's head direction changing, you just need to add keyframes to the bones rotation, not all the parts of the face. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how easy it would be to animate a character that has controls like this. If you look at the Moho demo project Mahoney and find the main bone layer, you'll see a ton of dials have been set up to control both the head overall and the individual features of the face. Having these controls out here is much easier to work with than trying to directly animate each piece of the face by hand. And in the actions panel, you can see how they've organized all the actions that these bones all control. Looking at this can give you some great ideas for clever ways to use smart bones in your rig. We're gonna be building our own character in a similar way later. The last way I wanted to show you how to use smart bones is as a way to control switches. Here I have a switch for this hand with a few hand positions inside it. I've created a smart bone dial and if we go inside the action I've set up for it, you can see I've only made this one 12 frames long. Then I'm going to go to the switch and along the timeline, I'll have it swap through each version of the hand in sequence. I'll have each position on here for four frames to make it easier to select with the bone. Now back on the main timeline, I can use the dial to switch through the hand positions as I animate. So you might be wondering why you would want to do it this way instead of just right clicking the switch or using the switch selection panel. Well, if I use a smart bone, I can keep that control on the main bone layer with all of the other controls. I won't have to dig through the layers palette to select the switch every time I want to change the hand position. That's a lot more convenient. Just be aware if you're using this technique, you'll want the keyframe interpolation for the bone channel set to step. Then it won't try to interpolate from one position to another when you set keyframes on the bone. It'll just stay where you set it until you set it to a new position. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how powerful smart bones can be. We'll look at plenty more examples later when we're rigging our main character. So far, all the rigging we've done has been on vector layers, but you can also use bones with bitmap images you've imported or drawn. We're going to look at the best method for doing that in the next video. I'll see you there.